Hi, my name is David Christensen. I'm a librarian at the Seattle Public Library. The Seattle Public Library is located on Indigenous land. These are the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, specifically the Duwamish people. What is data visualization? Data visualization can be thought of anything that converts data sources into visual representation, such as charts, graphs, maps, or even tables. The visual representation of information helps identify trends, outliers, and patterns, and is especially helpful for large amounts of data. Data visualization has the power to tell a story and highlight insights or suggest a course of action. Data visualization can be emotionally persuasive. Let's consider two very different approaches to data visualization using gun death data. In 2018, there were 11,356 gun deaths in the United States. We can absorb this number to an extent, but more as a summary statistic. A different approach considers the individual, the age at which they were killed, and a measure of years of life cut short due to violence. Shown in a different lens, the impact of data visualization can be more than numbers. Let's look at another example about the power to inform. This is U.S. Representative Katie Porter showing the difference between R&D spending and other spending by pharmaceutical company AbbVie. Let's listen in for a few minutes. Mr. Gonzalez, how much did you spend, did AbbVie spend on litigation and settlements from 2013 to 2018? Uh, I, I don't have that number off hand. We'll be happy to give it to you. Okay, $1.6 billion, $2.45 billion on R&D, $1.6 billion in litigation and settlements. What about marketing and advertising? How much does AbbVie spend on that? Uh, well, marketing and advertising, we spend about $4 billion a year. Yep, $4.71 billion. How about executive compensation, 2013 to 2018? 2013 to 2018, it's probably on average about $60 million a year. Try 334 on for size. Now, how much did AbbVie spend on stock buybacks and shareholders, stock, stock buybacks and dividends to enrich your shareholders from 2013 to 2018? Well, stock buybacks, if you actually look at just pure stock buybacks, it would be about $13 billion. Stock buybacks uh, and dividends is the question, sir. Uh, dividends that have to come back with that, a number for that over that period of time. Fifty billion dollars. So, Mr. Gonzalez, you're spending all this money to make sure you make money, rather than spending money to invest in, develop drugs, and help patients with affordable, life-saving drugs. You lie to patients when you charge them twice as much for an unimproved drug, and then you lie to policymakers when you tell us that R&D justifies those price increases. Data visualization also has the power to mislead. This visualization of gun deaths in Florida presents data with an upside-down y-axis, so that when violent crime is going up, it could easily be misread as going down. And here are two charts showing the same changes in interest rates over time. If you're only glancing at the chart on the left, it would be reasonable to assume staggering growth in interest rates, but real change is about one one hundredth of one percent. We've looked at a few compelling data visualizations and a few misleading ones. Knowing how, why, and when to use data visualization will help inform its proper use. It will also help you have a critical eye when you encounter visualizations. Here are some pretty typical times you will want to visualize data. In exploratory data analysis, it is common to visualize the data you have just to see what is there. This is especially helpful when you need to analyze large quantities of data. In journalism, academia, business, and elsewhere, data visualization can be embedded in papers, websites, or articles to help explain your research. Or, data viz can be a vehicle to deliver a message or tell a story. It's also very likely that you will use data visualization to support data-driven policy 
research, funding applications, and more in future lines of work. There are some broad planning considerations you should think through each time you're planning to make a visualization. What is the purpose? What questions are you trying to answer? Who is the audience? Is it your boss, coworkers, funders, yourself? What type of visualization would work best to answer your questions? What variables do you need to make those charts? What are the time allowances to clean the data, prep the data, sketch out a visualization, build the visualization, assess and modify? This video is part of a series of lectures recorded to teach about basic data visualization concepts. It was designed by members of the Visualizing the Future Symposia project and was made possible in part by a national forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This content is designed to be used freely. See the video description for more information about this lecture series and the Visualizing the Future Symposia project.